Hey everyone, this is Dan again at the Evolving Music Blog, and I'm answering another question. Somebody wrote who is a brand new piano teacher, and uh, she wanted to know uh, kind of how to get started as a new piano teacher, and um, also part of the question seemed to be asking about what do you do in the first lesson with like a brand new student. So I'm going to kind of uh, break that question into two parts, and the first part I'm actually going to cover um, when she asks what to do in the very first lesson. And uh, I'm going to assume that this is maybe for kids, like maybe a new student, like six, seven, eight, nine, uh, five might be a little young to approach it like this, but definitely six, seven, eight, nine, even ten. And um, if you don't get through everything in this, uh, it's definitely a good place to start. So um, first of all, I do use the Faber Method books, and I definitely use the primer, um, the primer level lesson book. As, as the first book and the first lesson, and uh, we usually also get to the first uh, few songs in that book, so those would be the black note songs. And um, if the student is a little bit older, maybe eight or nine or ten, not quite old enough for, the, um, for that, I think it's like the young adult uh, lesson book, um, then we might jump either to where they teach C position or right to the middle of the book where they teach how to read the real music. So you want to kind of gauge that yourself. But without the book, these are the kinds of things that I do right off the bat in the beginning of a lesson. I'm going to just go right through them. So uh, the first thing, right when a student comes in, I like to um, just kind of get them acquainted with the piano. And I have a little game that I do called Copycat. And uh, basically what I'll do is I'll just start playing very simple patterns on black notes, maybe something like, or maybe like, and whatever short pattern I play, they just have to copy it. And at first, I'm not too worried about rhythm or fingers, I'm just looking for them to get the exact pattern of black notes that I do. But kind of as we get going, I might make them a little bit longer, and I might start to ask them to try to copy the exact hand that I'm using, and the rhythm that I'm using, and the fingers that I'm using. So we kind of take it a little simple, they're getting acquainted with the piano, we're having fun, and um, then we kind of like, I kind of make it a little bit more challenging for them. We spend maybe about five minutes doing that, five to ten minutes tops, and then I ask them if they know their musical alphabet. And uh, most of them usually haven't heard of that before, so I teach them their musical alphabet, just how to say it and write it. We're not doing it on the piano yet. And um, so I ask them to maybe write the first seven letters of the alphabet and say them forwards and backwards. And then what we do after that, usually, if things are going well, is uh, I start to introduce them to the white notes, and taking that musical alphabet that we just learned, and putting them on to the white notes of the piano. And I usually start, um, a lot of people start with middle C, and uh, maybe I do that, but usually what I do, because this kind of really explains the concept of the whole piano, is I have them play the lowest white note and explain to them that that's A, the first letter in the musical alphabet. And then right away they go, oh, okay, A, B, C, D, and all of a sudden, they own that whole piano just by knowing A and the musical alphabet repeating over and over and over and over again at the piano. A lot of kids will just repeat that musical alphabet up the entire piano without even asking them to do that. It's just kind of a natural thing to do. And um, then if they, if they seem to be picking up things really well, you can try to have them say those letter names backwards, back down the piano. So, once they kind of understand the concept of the music alphabet and how to name the notes on the piano, then we start trying to isolate specific notes. And um, usually I pick C because that's going to be the most common note. And, um, you know, make sure that they understand that you find C because it's next to the two black notes. And then see if they can find and play every single C up, or, yeah, up and down the entire piano and then maybe every D, maybe every E, and so on and so forth. And um, then sometimes I ask them to count how many there are, and maybe things like that. Maybe I ask them to do every C, D, and E all the way up, down, up the piano and back down, 
you can get kind of a little creative with it, but the idea is that you're isolating, you're picking out notes from the musical alphabet and having them find and identify only those notes up and down the whole piano. So really what we've done thus far is I've given, I've started them from um, a standpoint of kind of like really taking control and understanding the whole piano. We really haven't done anything in a book yet at this point. Uh, and then after that, because what's going to come next is they're going to have to play music from the book or whatever. So then I explained to them the idea of finger numbers. And uh, just a little personal thing that I have found over the years works is I ask them to hold up their hands and I just start counting. One, two, three, four, five. And if you just start doing that, a lot of the kids will um, just follow right along with you. They're, you ask them to hold up their hands. One, two, three, four, five. And they just kind of do that right along with you. Uh, and then, one thing you're always going to run into in the future is they're going to, in their left hand, they're going to confuse always. They're going to think their pinky is one. Because, well, one is here, so one must be the low note in the left hand. And um, to try to avoid that trap early on, um, I have just a little saying that I do with my students, where when they're holding up their hands, I have them say, thumbs are one, pinkies are five. And then I might quiz them, and I might say, thumbs are, and they have to answer, pinkies are, and they have to answer, and I might kind of like do a bunch of those in a row and mix it up and see if they get it. Try to trick them a little bit. Another little game with finger numbers that I do is I have them hold up their hands, and I just point to one of their fingers and have them say the number of it back to me. And then also I hold up my hands, have them point to me, and I have to say the number of the finger that they pointed to. And you can have a little fun with that. You can pretend to get something wrong on purpose. You can say X or you can say 12 and see if they're paying attention. Just have a little fun with that. So if you've made it through all this, which most kids do, maybe the, maybe the younger kids don't get through all this stuff in the first lesson, uh, but usually the 7, 8, 9, 10-year-olds will. Um, then lastly, if I've decided that I still don't quite want to jump into the book yet, uh, sometimes I'll just jump right to teaching them C position. And at this point, they know the note names, they know their finger numbers, and you just have to show them the idea of putting your thumb, right thumb on C, left pinky on C, lining up all five fingers. And then from there, there's a few games that I do with that. Um, maybe I'll ask them to play the note. Right hand D, and they've got to play it. Left hand E, and they've got to play it. Then maybe I'll have them close their eyes, or I cover their hands, and they have to do it without looking. And then another great one that helps develop kind of the tactile uh, response, here's my pencil, is um, have them set up a hand in C position, have them close their eyes, you play a note, and see if by feeling, they can tell you what note it was that you played. Uh, and then, so, usually at this point, this is kind of nearing the end of what I do that's not in the method books for the very first lesson. Uh, I, like I said, I definitely will try to um, give them maybe three or four songs in the first method book, in the primer level lesson book, uh, to kind of get them started with some real music. And uh, that's it, though. That's, that's what I do on my own. I, I found this works really well. It, it kind of goes in a very logical, linear fashion, uh, I find. And uh, I hope maybe you can try that or try, uh, try kind of like a, your own version of that, and maybe it will help you out. So stay tuned, because I'm going to answer the other part of her question in the next clip, and uh, that was... Basically, if you're a new piano teacher, kind of how to get started um, learning how to judge a student's level and all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned for that, and thanks a lot.